Jump it up. And that's it. St. Ed's with their starting five back on the floor. Oh, wow. Here, look at this. And that's a charge. Palmer. Thank you for joining us on Channel 6 Sports. I'm John Merck here, joined by Paul Lepic, bringing you IHSA Boys AA sectional basketball. From the campus of Elgin High School at Chesboro Fieldhouse, a battle tonight between the Larkin Royals and the rockford Guilford Vikings. Should be a good contest, Paul. What can we expect to see this evening? Well, I think Larkin's going to come out with the run. I think Guilford's going to try to sag in the middle to try to work off the boards. They've got the height advantage a little bit on Larkin but I think Larkin's got the quickness tonight. And if Larkin can keep that quickness tonight as they did against Rockford Jefferson the game before, I think it'll be a long night for the Guilford Vikings. And the teams that have given Larkin some trouble in the past are teams such as this Guilford squad, teams with a little bit of height. They fell to Wabonzi Valley twice. They fell to St. Charles once. Teams with good inside pressure. But I know Dom Canada hopes to counter that by some full court press and try to exploit the slowness of the Vikings. Well, one thing that Guilford has against them is their susceptibility to the press. But I think one of the good things that Larkin's done over the past as far as defense is they've stepped in the passing lanes. They've tried to sag in the middle so that in the paint, the guys do not get the rebounds. The, 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 um, the other team doesn't get the rebounds, and that's been the case against Rockford Jefferson. Hopefully that'll be the case against Guilford tonight. And Dom kanata has got to have his players guard against looking past this game to a big rematch with Hananiga, who they met last year in the sectional. Well, you know, given, and we'll cover this later on, the upsets that have occurred so far in, in the double-A competition, I think Elgin has a pretty good chance of knocking off Rock, Rockton Hananiga because it is on their home court. Hopefully they can do that. You're right. You can't look past. you got to look at the game at hand, and you got to be prepared against this Guilford ball club. All right, and we'll get into some more of those key matchups as we get into the ball game, and it should be a good one, Paul. We'll be back with the tip-off and first half action after this break on Jones Intercable Sports. Elgin continues to grow. The population currently stands at more than 77,000. And experts say that by the year 2000, that number will move to more than 95,000. As the area continues to grow and develop, you need to keep in touch with the latest developments. Here at Channel 6, we don't just cover Elgin, we care about it. Join John Merck here and the Elgin Week in Review news team. Fridays at 6 and 9 p.m., Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. I thought I was going blind, but I didn't have enough money to do anything about it. The National Eye Care Project offers medical eye care to those in need. If you are 65 or older and do not have an ophthalmologist, please call 1-800-222-EYES. Sight is so precious. If you need help, call 1-800-222-EYES. A loud and noisy Chesboro Fieldhouse as the fans get ready for some IHSA sectional basketball. And fans of high school basketball in general, Paul, are just hoping that maybe this contest will be a close one. Larkin's been killing people, as we mentioned earlier. Why don't you go ahead, as they introduce the Larkin Royals in a second here, and give us the starting lineups. There you see some of the Guilford players being introduced. Okay, Guilford comes in with a record of 18 wins, 10 losses. Their starting lineup looks like this. At one guard is Charles Hansard, a 5'10 junior. Other guard, number 23, Johnny Rucker, a 5'11 junior. At center is number 52, Ben Holmstrom. You'll hear a lot about him tonight. He's 6'7", 230, and a sophomore. At one forward is Mike Benton, number 33. He's 6'1", 170, and also a sophomore. Other forward, Anthony Fletcher, 6'5", 175, and a junior. A rather young squad for this Rockford Guilford Viking ball club. A very young squad, and this bodes well for years ahead for basketball fans in Rockford. They only have one senior on the team, and he's the 10th man 
on this squad. There you see the rest of the Guilford team. They come out, they're fired up. They made the 45 minute journey from Rockford. Arrived about two hours before game time and now it's time for the starting lineup for the Larkin Royals. Tell us who they'll counter with, Paul. Well, it's their usual starting five as you see Sherrick Simpson over on the side there just past the, Lark just past the Guilford huddle. Sherrick is encouraging the crowd here as Larkin comes in with a record of 25 wins and three losses. They come out with the two guards of Matt Schuler, a 5'10 senior. Other guard, Sean Palmer, a 6'1 senior. At one forward, Greg Harnock, a 6'2 junior. David Binion, a 6'1 senior. And Chris Brown in the middle, a 6'4 senior. So Hornock, out of the starting five, will be the only guy returning after this Larkin Ball Club ends their season. Um, now I see that they made it. No, take that back. What they're doing here, folks, is they're introducing the entire roster because we are playing in Chesboro, which is not the Larkin home court. You know, the Larkin is uh, seated number one in the sectional. And it's a nice touch, and the crowd predominantly Larkin backers. They appreciate it. And there you see some of the guys. There's Angle. A lot of these kids aren't starters, but they get a lot of quality playing time. And Kanata's excited having a lot of these kids back next year. You talked about Simpson, not a starter, but a real force on this ball team. And he's only a junior, as you said. He'll be back next year and will probably end up being, along with Hornock, the nucleus of the club next year. Absolutely right. And you know, you maybe saw that in the Jefferson game, the fact that the, the guys got in towards the latter part of that fourth quarter and nothing but good spirits coming out uh, because of the fact that, as you just said, these guys are going to be the nucleus next year for Dom Canada and his Larkin Royals. And Sherrick Simpson is a great guy to have the nucleus around. You know, another guy, though, that came off the bench, Kendrick Thomas, he is also a spark plug. He comes off the bench. He's the sixth man. Sherrick can either go sixth or seventh man off that bench. Uh, Larkin basically goes eight or nine deep. And uh, as you see, Matt Schuler coming out. But uh, yeah, a very powerful squad right now for the Larkin Royals. And there's the junior point guard, Greg Hornock. Not quite a full house here, but I imagine tomorrow night when Elgin High plays and into Friday, it'll be a tough ticket to get a hold of here at Chessboro. You better believe it. It's a pretty good crowd here tonight as well. Looking across the way, as you might be seeing some of the fans across the way throughout the course of the ball game, that across the way is almost entirely filled with Larkin and Guilford uh, fans. Student section right in front of us here, courtside. Student section right in front of us here, and it's uh, it's filled the capacity too. And Chris Brown, the last one introduced, he's been the key in a lot of these ball games. He has gotten off to a lot of quick starts. We've done a couple games where he scored 10 points, 12 points in the first quarter. Then they start to key on him, and that lets David Binion just explode. Now we're at that time now where we're going to take a pause to listen to our national anthem here at Chesbro Fieldhouse. for basketball. Chesbro Fieldhouse ready to rock and roll. Should be a good one. The fans settling into their seat. Larkin will try to see to it that they don't stay seated for too long here. As a matter of fact, they're up and at it already. 
We're set for the tip-off as you get a look at some of the big beef of Rockford Guilford. They'll try to settle into a half-court game early on and stop the Royals from running. The Royals will look to run and gun, press hard, and put a lot of points on the scoreboard. Tony Fletcher and David Binion, number 40 in the mirror, set to jump. And Guilford get the ball out of bounds. They're going to rule that Chris Brown traveled. To try to get around its defenders, so Guilford's got it to open up. And Hansard looks to set the offense. Rucker inside. Nice pass, easy bucket missed by Holstrom. Here come the Royals. Schuler ah. Off the mark, Hanser. And the soft jumper laid in by Johnny Rucker. Johnny Rucker, the leading scorer on this ball club, averages almost 18 points a ball game. Well, one thing Larkin can't do is give him that baseline as Rucker had that wide open shot. There's Schuler. Oh boy, nothing but the bottom of the net. Uh, excuse me, Sean Palmer on the jumper from the top of the key. A little pressure, a big collision between Johnny Rucker and David Binion whistled for the foul. And for Binion, that'll be his first, the team's first, the early going here. And Guilford will inbound. Guilford's gonna try to snake their way inside and try to get inside position for those rebounds. They have that height advantage, as we said in the pregame. But one thing, though, Holmstrom has to make that shot. He had that wide open shot from the right side. Him being a sophomore, maybe there are little butterflies in his stomach or something, I don't know. But Holmstrom has to make those shots if Guilford's gonna succeed tonight. And a little bit of a discussion between the referee and the official score. And they're still discussing what's going on. And this is actually good news for Guilford. Maybe the only way they can slow down the Royals. We'll try to find out what the discussion is about. As Mike Benton, one of the young stars for the Vikings, waits patiently to inbound. Okay, <laughs> and they've got to straighten out whatever it was. Fletcher. Answered, misses from long range, and Binion with the board. Ball loose. Look out. Ooh. And Johnny Rucker tried to drive the lane, and Binion forced the turnover. Well, I tell you, Binion is lucky he didn't call for a foul there and a reach around. And Hornock behind the back in traffic. David Binion. Oh. They rule no foul. My God, how the heck did Binion get around his defenders and not get hammered there? And that wasn't a matter of whether it was a foul or not. It was who committed it, and it wasn't <laughs> called. Yeah. Right. Binion puts in the easy two from the baseline. One Larkin thing, up 5-2. One thing Larkin's got to do tonight is play aggressive all four quarters tonight. No letdown. Oh, and the nice little baby move, but it doesn't go for Benton. Binion to Palmer. Oh. Tony Fletcher goes up for the block. It's whistled for the foul. Palmer will go to the foul line. For Fletcher, that's his first team first as Fletcher went up for the block, but he got him with the hip. And Dom Kanata told me earlier that they don't like to call these free throws in practice. The way the Royals shot from the charity stripe early in the season, they prefer to call them foul shots. Nothing is free. Palmer hits it. Palmer, 73% free thrower on the year. This is the second, gathered by Holmstrom. We had the same play guy had <laughs> in the last game. <laughs> oh. Benton goes inside and took the little baby steps. 
And one thing Benton's got to do is look for the tall timbers inside. He was wandering through the tall timbers of Larkin, and he traveled. Michael Benton averages nine points a ball game. Most of them come on the inside. Mm. And the quick hands by Hanser. Coast to coast, but off the mark. Some contact. Here come the Royals. They got a three on one. Oh. Palmer hammered. No basket. Benton would like to see an offensive foul for some reason, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be called on Mike Benton. Palmer wondering how that cannot be a continuation. That's very easy. There is no continuation in, in high school basketball. Now they tell you there's not in the NBA either, but yeah. Palmer will get a couple more from the free throw strike. In and out. the second 7-2 the Royals on top and Hansard looks to set the offense Johnny Rucker top of the key looks inside and that's going to be off Hansard trying to gather the loose ball and Holmstrom played the post and what happened was when the pass came into the middle Holmstrom forgot to go inside the paint to get the pass Holmstrom average is 11 and a half a ball game. Looking to get on track here. The Royals run some offense. Palmer picked off, quick hands, Johnny Rucker. They're gonna say Palmer knocked it out of bounds. Sean Palmer looking like a frustrated young high school ball player thus far early on in the ball game. Inside the holes from him again. Binion gathers the miss. They have Brown on the left wing. Hornock all the way for the deuce. 9-2, Larkin over Rockford Guilford. Holmstrom very late getting back in this position. Hornock right on top of him for that layup. Under five minutes left in the first period. Ah. Oh, Matt Schuler was beat off the ball. And I think, did they give the foul to Binion on that? No, I, no, I think they gave it to Schuler. Okay. That's his first team second. Coach Kanata came up and said, you gotta play in front of the man. You cannot let Rockford get behind you. Schuler, a little lackadaisical getting back. And that foul occurred in no man's land. And as a guard, you never want that to happen. And you could see he was beaten off the dribble. Binion was coming out for the help up top. Schuler collects the foul. Inside and rejected by Binion. Hornock gathers. That was Kevin Renner who had checked in for the Vikings. Knocked away and we got a breakaway. Hanser can't control. Buddy collects and puts it in. And the quick hands, they do have some good athletes on this Guilford squad, especially in the backcourt with Rucker and Hanser. I tell you, the quick hands, as you said, Larkin's gonna have to watch their passes especially up top. Schuler takes the three. <laughs> Off the mark, Fletcher. Long down court pass. Kroger kicks it back out. Johnny Rucker drives. Can't get it to fall. Benton with the stick back. Well, they give the basket to yeah, Rucker. Give it to Rucker. Yep. Sean Palmer. Had visions of going baseline and was fouled out on the floor. Well, I tell you, that baseline was wide open and Palmer wanted to go to his left so bad. Call it on Hansard. That's his first, the team's third. Hornock thought about it. Binion inside. Hello. Hello. 
David got his dunk early tonight. Puts a dent on the floor, ball coming down, and a whistle. Travel, Larkin regains possession. David wants to set the tempo early. I don't blame him. Binion with a little punishment. <laughs> he was left wide open inside. Somebody missed his assignment. Oh, and he's got a scowl on his face. <laughs> he's got the game face working. Yeah. Hornock inside, Binion in traffic. He collects it, puts it in, another easy two. Binion with six. 13-6, Larkin on top. Approaching three minutes left. Inside move, nice basket by Kevin Rennert. That was a nice give and go from Rucker to Rennert. And Rucker, with the aggressive pressure, gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Rucker, that's his first, the team's fourth. Ball coming way out high, so Larkin's gonna inbound it right at that timeline. And you can sense the intensity in this ball game. These Guilford kids aren't coming in here wanting to just make a showing. They came to play. Hornock sets the offense. Dangerous pass, Brown collects. Off the mark, fight for the rebound, and Kroger controls. Here comes Hansard. 2.30 left, first half. And Hansard takes it to the top, looks to reset the offense. Inside for Kroger, rejected. Fight for the ball, Schuler controls. And they're gonna call that a travel. Yes. There you saw Matt Kroger making the call and it was the right one. Yeah, if Schuler doesn't roll over, that's not a travel. But he had to, to try to get that outlet pass. Ooh. And they get answered the point guard on a push off, trying to free up Johnny Rucker. Benton back into the ball game for Guilford. Hansard will have a seat. That's the 15 foul called against Rockford and Guilford. Schuler looks inside, finds Hornock. Oh! oh. Hornock misses, Binion collects. Boy, I tell you, the Hornock wide open on the weak side. Somebody missed an assignment for Guilford. Johnny Rucker becomes the point guard with Hansard on the bench. Goes baseline, looks for help. Benton for three. And that is a good old fashioned brick. That's a good old fashioned rebound. <laughs> <laughs> Palmer. Oh. And he misses long. Hornock with the jumper. And Fletcher controls for the Vikings. Rucker pushes. Ooh. Air ball. Almost a good save by Brown on the near side. Well, you can't fault Larkin, though, because they have good shots, wide open shots. They're just not falling in the early going. And Guilford calls their first time out, and we're going to stay here with you through this first time out. Paul, why don't you run down some of the other action taking place in the IHSA? Well, of course, tomorrow night right here at Chesborough, it's Rockton Hananega, the number two seed, taking on Elgin, number six seed. The winner eventually is going to go up against the winner of the Rock Island sectional, and that sectional, number one ranked Rockford Boylan takes on number four, Geneseo Darnell. And number two, LaSalle Peru takes on number three, Rockford Auburn. Uh, Auburn. So the first four seeds in the Rockford Island section, Rock Island sectional all came through. Other action tonight at Thornwood. Leo at 21 and five against St. Francis de Sales at York. It's number one Proviso East at 27 and 0, taking on a below 500 St. Ignatius. Mm -hmm. At Simeon High School tonight, it's King number two at 25 and one, taking on Dunbar. Insdale Central, it's Rich, Rich Central, 24 and four, taking on Shepard. At Carl Sandberg High School, it's Bradley Bourbonnet, who's ranked number 11 in the state at 25 and two, taking on Lockport. Lockport with a big upset win over, over Wabansi Valley last time. Stevenson, the number six team at 26 and one, taking on Carmel, but watch out for those Corsairs at Waukegan. 
And at Leiden, it's Weber at 24 and three against Notre Dame at 19 and eight. And of course, tonight at DeKalb, it's St. Edward at 22 and eight against Princeton, 22 and seven in the super sectional. Winner goes downstate. Benton hits a short jumper. 15-10. And picked off, Johnny Rucker on a quick hand. Looks down court. Kroger, and that could go either way. And they're gonna call the block on one of the Royals. And it looks like it's gonna be number 22, Sharik, uh, Sharik Simpson. That's his first, team's third. Shriek into the ball game for Brown. Rucker keeps it alive. <laughs> Simpson collects. Under a minute left here in the first period. Hornock thought about it. Simpson, lots of room. <laughs> oh, and did he take seven steps or eight? <laughs> Only a matter of time before they were gonna call that one on Simpson. And on the turnover, Guilford will look to cut into this five-point margin. Picked off, Matt Schuler, quick hand. Looks for help, gets it to his point guard. Simpson with a big, quick step, and he collects. Simpson with his first two points of the ball game. Most of the turnovers tonight, both sides have been on these passing lane things. Uh, the passes are not clean tonight. Holmstrom with a good inside position gets the easy deuce. As time runs down, Palmer with the long one oh. off the back. And Binion with the last second effort that won't go either. And at the end of one, it's the Larkin Royals 17, the Rockford Guilford Vikings 12. We'll be back with second quarter action after this short break on Jones Intercable Sports. Elgin continues to grow. The population currently stands at more than 77,000. And experts say that by the year 2000, that number will move to more than 95,000. As the area continues to grow and develop, you need to keep in touch with the latest developments. Here at Channel 6, we don't just cover Elgin, we care about it. Join John Merck here and the Elgin Week in Review news team. Fridays at 6 and 9 p.m., Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. I got my tuition paid thanks to EAL. EAL made it happen for me. Educational Assistance Limited has helped over a thousand kids like these get a college education. I'm Peter Roscombe. EAL takes your donation of excess business inventory and swaps it for scholarships of like value. EAL, it's a great way for business to lend a hand. Call 708-690-0010. And head coach of the Vikings, Mike Miller, has to be pretty happy. His ball club right in this ball game. Mm. Right off the bat, a turnover. And he's not going to be too happy about that. <laughs> Into Binion. Oh, oh, how did he get that off the glass? <laughs> he almost ran Simpson over. And he puts it off the glass. Yeah, because Simpson came near side looking for a pass and being inside to take it to the hoop. And the defensive pressure picking up for the Royals. Oh! Mm. Simpson looked like he had pretty good position but gets whistled for the block. Sherrick, that'll be his second personal, the team's fourth. And these Guilford guards are really quick. That first step off the dribble. Larkin's got to watch that baseline. He's been susceptible so far tonight. And Guilford wants to work it down low. And the defensive specialist, Kendrick Thomas, into the ball game for the Royals, number 50. And he gathers. Oh, my. No look to Simpson. Ooh. Oh, he had Binion wide open for the dunk. Palmer! Oh! Oh my! Now this could be interesting. Ooh. This could be a three-shot foul here. He was really clobbered. <laughs> oh my. 
fouls on Benton. That's his second personal, the team's sixth. Benton went for the block and got all body. It's a three-shot foul because he fouled him past the stripe. Palmer making a living at the charity stripe tonight. So far, three for five. Three for six, rather. And Hansard set to check back in for the Vikings. And Johnny Rucker will get his first rest of the ball game. That was right the first time, three for five. Let's hope he's four for six. <laughs> and five for seven. <laughs> And it's good. See the lone man in the stands up way up at the top trying to distract Sean Palmer. And it's 21-12, not 221-12, as you saw. Palmer hits all three. <coughs> and the pressure. Swarming full court pressure. And Thomas gains the jump ball and some extracurricular activity. Answered and Thomas have words. Kendrick's a quick guy, I tell you. He's one of their stars off the football team that we saw earlier in the year. And now he's playing an aggressive basketball. And you will not find a more fierce competitor than Kendrick Thomas. This kid could hurt his grandmother over a game of Parcheesi. <laughs> Hornock set to inbound. <laughs> Brown back into the ball game. Hornock goes baseline and gets mugged. Fletcher looking around. Who's that on? Who's that on? Take your pick. I'm going to call it on number 52, Holmstrom. That's his first. Team seventh, so now Elgin will be in the bonus from now on, even though this is a two shot foul. Elgin will be at the line at every Guilford foul. And Hornock, the top free throw shooter on this ball club, shoots 80% from the stripe. Benton grabs the seat as Rucker's back in the lineup for Guilford. Good look at junior guard Greg Hornock. Hits the free throw. Takes a glance at the clock. And number 24, Dan Kroger checks back in for the Vikings. Kevin Rennert has a seat on the bench. One of the assistant coaches there telling Rennert to go straight up when you're trying to block a shot and defending. Don't lean into the player, go straight up with it. Hornock hits them both. Oh. Kendrick Thomas coming for the steal. A little volleyball going on. And Simpson shuffled the pivot foot and on the turnover, Guilford will try to cut into this 12 point lead. Sure, trying to control the ball and a guy his height should not be handling the ball. Looked like Hornock got the steal after Thomas pressured and Simpson ended up with the ball. Answer on the dribble. Oh, and Fletcher goes into the stands trying to save that ball. Well, a nice defense by Larkin over on that far side, anticipating that pass. Caused that Aaron pass into the stands. And Larkin has really kicked it up a notch the first few minutes of this second quarter. What they do so well is fill the passing lanes and just deny the ball. Looking for a back door here somewhere. There's a weave down low. Palmer goes across the cross. Here's Simpson. Oh, and a wild layup. And a wide open shot to the hoop. He made the nice move, but just couldn't finish. And Hansard off the mark. Palmer rebounds. Oh, if he would have looked down court, he had a couple teammates open. Under six minutes left in the second quarter. Brown <laughs> on the jumper from the middle of the lane. Brown's first two points of the night. 
Uh, if you, I don't know if you folks at home can see the expressions on the Guilford faces on the court. They're starting to get real tired, especially Holmstrom, number 52. Palmer almost picks it off. Fletcher throws up the air ball from three feet. Palmer nice saves. Play. Up ahead to Thomas. Yeah! Kendrick Thomas throws it down. 28-12 and more pressure. We set up at the top and Guilford's susceptible to the press and you're seeing it now. Fletcher gets the easy one, but Guilford looking a little tentative. Having trouble with that full court pressure. Guilford's first two points of the quarter come at the five minute mark. Brown. <laughs> Same shot he hit a minute ago. Schuler, Zeismer check, set to check in and Palmer picks it off. He could go all the way and he does. Oh! oh, offensive foul. Boy, Sean Palmer having a rough night with the Zebras. That's Palmer's first personal. It's the 15th foul against Larkin. I didn't think that the Guilford mm. defender got in, got in the position. Uh, they take Palmer out, put in Zeismer. And Schuler back in the lineup. Five yeah. seconds. And another Rockford turnover. And Kendrick Thomas is saying, yes, sir, we did it. The defense is rising to the occasion. Hornock. Hornock gets the jumper, 32-14. The Royals climbing all over the Vikings. Some more pressure. Kroger. Oh, that looked like a travel. Answer. Oh, Kendrick. Kendrick goes for the ball. Runs over Johnny Rucker. They're trying to do a trap up at the timeline. It's a 16 foul against Larkin as there's a timeout on the court for Guilford. And Guilford takes a timeout. We'll do the same. We'll be back after this short break with more on the inner cable. All right, and we're back for second half action. As we get into it here in a second, Paul, I'll let you recap some of the scoring quickly. What's Rockford going to have to do to get back in this ball game? <laughs> well, I guess one of the things is to try to... It is really rare, Paul, in high school basketball that you can see the defensive intensity time after time after time that the Royals provide. There you see some of the Larkin student body. Speaking of up. intense. Yeah. And another turnover. You see what Larkin's trying to do defensively is trap at the timeline, the double team, as soon as Guilford crosses that timeline and use the timeline as a third defender. Approaching the four minute mark in the second quarter. Inside for Zeismer. Good, strong move. Puts in the deuce. Uh, 
Almost another turnover. Ow, Kendrick. Mm. And Kendrick got over there to help out and got called for the reach in. Kendrick with the reach in foul. That'll be the seventh team foul against Larkin. So Fletcher's going to go to the line for the one and one. Thomas comes back out. Palmer comes back in. Fletcher's really struggled from the line thus far this year. Under 50% from the charity stripe. They got two points so far tonight. That on a basket. And there you can see why. Six a free throw, but that thing was barely above the rim. Second one. Down the way. And good. Boy, they're pretty when they go in on that line drive, but Fletcher's got all four points for Guilford in this quarter. Inside for Brown. <laughs> it's free for the easy one. Larkin by 20. We said that at the top, too. The fact that the, what Larkin wants to do is to crash inside, get the inside position. Brown, you saw there, perfect inside position. Almost over and back. It and is. it is over and back. Put the ball right on the timeline. The Royals force another turnover with their defensive pressure. Hornock. David Binion back on the lineup for the Royals. Who's going to come out? Now guys, somebody's going to have to come out. Who's coming out? Nobody wants to come out. Uh-uh. No, Who's not me. You. Ah, you. Greg Even Hornock. you. <laughs> Hornock gets a nice hand from the fans on the far side. There a look at David Binion. He's in the running to be an All-American on the McDonald's team. Benton comes in. Kroger comes out for Guilford. Ziesmer comes over to talk with Dominic Canada. And on the floor for the Royals, Hornock, Schuler, Palmer, Brown, and David Binion. Oh, nice look. Palmer can't control, and here come the Vikings. Benton to Fletcher. Oh! David Binion sends it into about the fifth row. David, welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> David Binney said, yeah, that was my man. <laughs> These are back in the lineup as Hornock grabs the seat. Benton looking to get the ball in. Fletcher moves to the inside and oh. lets fly an air ball. Well, you don't think Brown uh, intimidated him, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my. Binion out top. Schuler to the lane and he's hammered. I might call that one on Benton, it looks like, and that'll be his third personal foul. You don't want to. Oh no, they're not. They're going to call it on Fletcher. That's his second personal. Looked like Benton hit him. They're going to call it on Fletcher. And junior forward Kevin Renner checks back into the ballgame for the Vikings. In the front court with Holstrom. Schuler, a 65% free throw around the year, hits the first one. Larkin by 22. Oh, and another turnover. Holmstrom can't hold on. And a disastrous second quarter for the Vikings. Holmstrom extremely tired. You could see the front back of his jersey all sweated up. Oh, David wanted to mm. take it on him. They say, no, David, you kind of took some steps there. And you can see Binion just thinks he can beat Holmstrom off the ball. Right now, I think he can because Holmstrom is extremely tired. And not as quick to begin with. Now, ah, David. It'll be on Binion. That's his second personal. Binion grabs a seat as Hornock's back in the lineup for the Royals. And that'll put Johnny Rucker on the line.
And this Viking squad, not a very good team from the stripe. Rucker, a 58% free thrower. Ah. Holmstrom with the rebound and the putback. A rare offensive board for the Vikings. Holmstrom with four. Hornock beats Rucker across the timeline. Looking inside for Zeismer, picked off, and the Royals will regain control. Nice control by Palmer as he saw it coming through. It went off of Holmstrom's hand. Right through Palmer. Palmer never touched it. Hornock. Ooh. Off the mark, Brown with the good board, fakes up, and he'll get it to fall. And Chris with a nice soft touch off the back iron. And Larkin starting to guard that baseline. Guilford again looking for a back door somewhere. Ooh. And it'll count. Ben Holstrom on the inside move. Ball's gonna be called on number 30, Ziesmer. That's his first personal. Holmstrom at the line to complete the three-point play. And a rarity. Holmstrom, the best free thrower on this team. The big man, 71% on the year. Oh! In and out. Approaching 130 left in the first half. Palmer in the corner. Schuler. There. It's the long one. Schuler with five. Larkin by 23. <laughs> well, we said up top, you could, this could be a long night for the Vikings, and you're seeing it. And another turnover. I think I should have recorded that line before the game. And another turnover. <laughs> and another turnover. Well, Larkin's just extremely quick on defense. And as we said, that you know they're going to step inside the passing lines. And right now, Guilford's having a hard time just trying to make a pass cross court. And you know, the scary part is Larkin doesn't even have their best defenders in the ball game at this point. That's right. Simpson, Thomas, and Binion on, on the, all on the bench. Palmer off the mark. Guilford looks to push. Fletcher on the nice move from the baseline. Fletcher with six all in the quarter. And Guilford with a little defensive pressure. Hey, Palmer wide open, weak side, didn't see him. And wait for a last shot, it looks like. As we go under 30 seconds left here in the first half, Larkin up by 21. Palmer wide open. Decides to oh. drive, and he's tripped up. Oh! Wow. Sean Palmer <laughs> is really getting the short end of the stick, and he's in pain. Well, Sean wants to do a little acting job to convince the ref that, hey, he did get tripped. A little bit of a limp. Looks like he... Probably twisted the right ankle a little bit. It's like, guys, give me a break. Call Tom a foul. Kanata, on. very unhappy. If you can read lips, you know how unhappy he is. <laughs> Dominic, the children's show, too. <laughs> <laughs> Family programming, Dominic. <laughs> Most coaches up by 21 would have left this a field house by now. <laughs> Kroger inside. And the stick back. Let's Four hurt. seconds left. Last shot of the half. And it goes out of bounds. We come to the end of the first half. Larkin with a commanding second quarter builds a lead of 43-24 up by 19. We'll be back with second half action and a recap of the first half after this break on Jones Intercable. Get ready! When we move, we move fast. 
when we hit, we hit with irresistible force. Adventure training in the Army National Guard. These are things that are good for you. Things that people do every day. They become habits. Because if they didn't, these things just wouldn't get done. Even something as good for you as saving. Fortunately, there's an easy way to save. Buy U.S. savings bonds through the payroll savings plan at work. Every payday, you save. And the sooner you start, the more you'll save. So make it a habit. Buy U.S. savings bonds. All right, and we're back for second half action. As we get into it here in a second, Paul, I'll let you recap some of the scoring quickly. What's Rockford going to have to do to get back in this ball game? <laughs> well, I guess one of the things is to try to get down low, because that's what got them here this far. But uh, I don't think they can really get back into it because of the fact that they are tall. I think they're awfully tired. I think Larkin has a much deeper bench right now than Rockford Guilford. So it'll be, I, I think it's going to be a long night for Guilford. So basically you're telling me it could be over. I think this game's over. I, I really do. I, I'm not impressed with Guilford right now. Holmstrom is awfully tired. You see him right there on the left of the baseline as he's setting up for the free throw. Uh, although there isn't going to be a free throw. But <laughs> but in any, way, in any case, yeah, I think they're awfully tired. Well, we'll see if the Vikings can regroup. Maybe they devise a new strategy at halftime. Fletcher baseline. And it looked like he got hammered, but they whistle that it's just an out of bounds to Gilford. 43-24. Larkin on top here. Johnny Rucker inside to Holmstrom. Can't get it to drop. Binion comes away with it. I want you to recap that Larkin scoring for us, Paul. Well, Larkin is led in scoring by David Binion with 10 and Chris Brown with 8. Then you've got Sean Palmer with eight, Hornock with six, Schuler with five, and then you've got Thomas Simpson and Ziesmer all with two points each. And there's going to be a foul on that play. Brown will go to the free throw line. And how about the Guilford Vikings? Well, let me just call the foul here. That's on Holsham. That's his second personal team's first. Uh, the Vikings led in scoring by Fletcher with eight. Then you got Holmstrom with six. We got Rucker with four, Hansard with two, Rennert with two, and Benton with two. And Brown gets the free throw to drop. Almost a 61% shooter from the line. And the second one good. And here's some more pressure. They break it. Fletcher. Went to the glass and was fouled on the play. Larkin a little bit late getting back on defense. Fletcher able to go to the baseline. They're going to call that foul on number 40, David Binion. That's his third personal, team's first. You don't want to get Binion in foul trouble. Sending Fletcher to the line. And Fletcher misses short. Fletcher, their leading scorer tonight so far with eight. Pinion comes out. Palmer comes back in. On the floor for the Royals. Simpson, Palmer, Hornock, Schuler, and Brown. Fletcher gets the second one to drop. Guilford with a little bit of a trapping pressure defense. Palmer looks for Simpson. Brown, yeah. and it counts. Brown will go to the line to complete the three-point play. He's got all four of Larkin's points tonight in the third quarter. Ball called on 33 Benton. That's his third, team second. Larkin extends the lead to 22 points. 
kind of an interesting twist. This is the first year for Rockford Guilford coach Mike Miller. Last year he was an assistant on the Hananiga squad, mm -hmm. which plays here tomorrow and lost to Larkin in the sectional finals last year. Free throw off the mark, long down court pass. Benton gathers and he'll set the offense. Johnny Rucker. Oh, oh they're boy. gonna say somebody on Larkin got a piece of that. Didn't look like it, but Guilford catches a break. Guilford on offense tried to have that baseball pass in the front court to try to catch Larkin napping on defense. And there's a steal. Hornock with the pick. He's got Fletcher to beat. And he finishes. Hornock with eight on the night. Watch the trap at the timeline. Nope. Hands are to Benton. And Palmer with the contact. He'll draw the foul. For Palmer, that's his second person of the team, second. Well, you think Rockton, Hananiga, and Elgin High both have their coaching staffs and possibly some players here tonight watching this ball game? Yeah, I saw Elgin coach Jim Harrington walking around before the ball game. Benton on the pretty reverse. I asked Harrington, which of these two teams would you rather face? And he said, we'd be happy just to get here and face either one of these squads. His team <laughs> playing pretty good ball at this point. They're gonna need a real tough effort against Hananiga. And Maroon's the sixth seed in this sectional. And Palmer with the uncharacteristic poor shot from the corner. Tell you, Rockford Guilford was ranked number four in this sectional, the fourth seed ahead of, of the Elgin Maroons. And Rucker can't get the bucket to fall, but he'll draw the foul. It'll be on Simpson, that's his third, the team's third. Well, this is the third quarter, folks, and Larkin sometimes goes to sleep a little bit in the third quarter, and I think you're seeing it on defense. They're not getting back quick enough. And Guilford's beating them to the baseline right now. And you talked about the quickness on defense. That might be remedied just about now as Kendrick Thomas checks into the <laughs> ball game. Sean Palmer has a seat. Boy, you don't lose a whole lot. You send your leading scorer to the bench. He's sitting down next to David Binion, another big gun. And you still have all those threats on the floor. And Guilford with a little bit of pressure now. Hornock looks for help. Schuler across the timeline. And Simpson. Oh, wide oh. open. Oh. It opened up for him and he couldn't get it down. I don't think Sherrick saw that he was so open. Nobody there. Sherrick waiting for the contact that never came. Hanser picks it off. Fletcher for the easy one. And Guilford within 20 for the first time in quite a while. Coming up on the five minute mark in the third quarter, Hornock. In the lane, kicks out for Schuler. Thought about the jumper, puts it up. And he hits the soft baby J from about 12 feet out. Schuler with seven on the night. And Larkin back up by 21. Anzer to Fletcher on the wing. Holmstrom slapped away by Simpson. That time Holmstrom got the pass, went inside the lane, put the shot up. Didn't see Simpson from the side though. Hansard looking to make it happen. Oh. Dishes off. Benton can't get it to fall. Follow won't fall. Brown collects and here comes Schuler in the Royals. Schuler, Jay off the mark, Hansard with the board, long up court for Benton. Ah! 
And Brown commits the foul, and I believe they're going to count the bucket also. Yeah, Benton put it up. Basket's good. Foul on Brown. Brown, that'll be his first personal, the team's fourth. Only two team fouls called against Guilford so far, and there'll be a timeout on the court. And we're gonna stay here through this timeout. And let's talk a little bit, Paul. We don't have a chance that often to talk about some of the other basketball going on in the Chicago area. It's not confined to the Fox River Valley where basketball is crazy. Some tough teams coming out of the Chicagoland area. Let's start with Rockford Boylan, which is actually out west a little bit. I just heard on the way over that Lampley, their leading scorer, has been kicked off the team for the remainder of the year due to some discipline, disciplinary action. That's definitely going to hurt that Boylan squad. And of course, Boylan is the favorite to meet the winner of this sectional in the Super. Just because of the fact that the Super sectional is going to be played at the Rockford Metro Center. I think if you get Boylan off of the Rockford area to play him inside somewhere, you might have a chance of beating them. But you never know what can happen. There have been a lot of upsets. Lockport defeated Wabansi Valley in one of the upsets earlier uh, in this playoff tournament. And Wabansi Valley, you know how tough they were in the upstate eight. Uh, Lake Park with a, with a convincing victory over number one Hersey in the friend sectional. Uh, Lake Park, a below 500 ball club, looking for their first regional title. They never got it. Uh, that was since 1982. But Lake Park was a surprise. St. Charles is a commanding surprise out of that friend sectional. And so the Upstate 8, well represented. They are, and there's a couple other teams still alive. East Aurora also still alive. That helps because that sectional is at East Aurora. That's right, and they'll play Downers Grove, a game they should win. And the Royals back on offense. Cross court. Tapped away. And Schuler regains, and the Royals break out. And Rucker commits the foul from behind. And Hanser, not too happy with the play of his teammate. A little frustration beginning to show on the faces of this Guilford squad. And Rucker, that'll be his... I have him with three, they have him with two. In any case, that's the third team foul called against Guilford. Binion back in the lineup. Under four minutes left here in the third quarter. They look to Binion inside. Double team to Hornock. Brown, quick, crisp pass. Gets off the shot, not a good one. And Binion regains control. Schuler uh -uh. Off the mark, and Holmstrom. Collects the rebound. And Zerd, and they're going to call Schuler on the block. I, you know, try not to be partisan here. I thought that that was a pretty good call. I don't think Schuler had that position answered. A little bit too quick. Yeah, I think off the dribble, you're right. He definitely had the step on him. Schuler really did about all he could do is either that or reach in and commit the foul. And the Vikings will inbound. Rucker off the glass. Johnny Rucker has been relatively quiet tonight. During the year, a 54% shooter from the field, averaging almost 18 points a ball game. Schuler gets it across the timeline. Oh, Holmstrom tries to throw it off. Thomas saved. Schuler downtown. Oh, and Thomas gets called for the reach in. And Kendrick, they have him with three. That'll be his third personal. And the Guilford fans begin to make some noise. Their team down by 17. Team seventh foul. So from here on in, Guilford's going to be at the charity stripe. Guilford only with three team fouls. And the Guilford fans trying to summon their team back into this contest. Uh, you can tell Holmstrom is tired. He is soaked over on that far bench as he comes out and Rennert back in the lineup. Hansard with a good old fashioned brick. And Hornock beats the pressure under three minutes left. 
Inside for Brown, the step, and he gets it to fall. Brown with 14. And the pick by Renard frees Rucker up, gets the little scoop to fall. All right, defensively, this is not one of Larkin's best uh, showings here in the third quarter. And Guilford with the pressure. Not a good pass by David Binion. David's got to watch it. He's got three fouls. And Brown picks it off. Scramble for the ball. And Guilford will take possession. One off of Brown out of bounds near side here. And number 32, Foot, checks into the ball game for the Vikings. Holmstrom back in the lineup also. That was a short rest. Fletcher's going to grab a seat. Fletcher playing a pretty good ball game. Mangasha Foot, another junior. He doesn't see a lot of playing time. Has checked in. Rucker off the screen. Mm. Air ball. And Hornock brings it up court. And Foot commits the foul, trying to come over and double team Hornock. Zeismer set to check back in for the Royals. Well, Foot, that's his first personal. It's only the fourth team foul against Guilford. And Brown will take a seat next to Simpson. Angle on the bench. Binion. With the jumper. Count it. And a foul away from the ball. Panzer trying to keep Palmer off the glass. Committed the foul. That's gets good by Binion. That's his 12th point of the night. But a foul away from the ball. It's not it's a non-shooting foul. It's only the 15th foul. Answered with his second. Ooh. Binion collects his own miss, and he's fouled by Holmstrom. And there's some talking going on now. There you see David. And Holmstrom, that's his third personal. The 16 foul, so quick fouls right away here for Guilford. And when you get Binion and Thomas in a small circle and they start talking, Joan Rivers couldn't even get a word in. <laughs> Binion to the charity stripe. <laughs> and he misses the first one. Take it you're a big Joan Rivers fan, are you? Oh, huge. <laughs> oh, huge. <laughs> I can tell. Probably that and Geraldo, huh? Well. <laughs> oh, you like Geraldo, do you? And he gets the second one to fall. <laughs> Binion with the steal. Nice play by David. Watch and how he brings it up. David. Whoa. And a scramble for the ball. Palmer ends up with it. And now here comes Rucker ahead. Oh. Out of bounds. Well, I think Foot tried to do an alley-oop. Looked like it anyway. He tried to put the ball up off the backboard for a trailer to come and do something with it, it just went out of bounds. Yeah. Hit foot in a weak spot right in his hands, and the Royals <laughs> retain possession. This is Achilles' hand. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Rucker ahead of the pack. Thomas to beat. And Rucker puts it in, cuts the lead to 18. So they're able to get away with these baseball passes because Larkin a little slow getting back on defense. That's been this third quarter for Larkin. Timeout. Hornock about to get whistled for a five second call. Wisely calls a timeout. Now we're going to stay with you here. Less than one minute left well, in know, this third quarter of play, Paul. You no, know, we've been talking about some of the teams in the Chicagoland area. You would think by now some of them would get knocked off, but Proviso East awfully tough. They won their 51st in a row the other night, 27 and 0 this season. King is still alive at number two. Stevenson still alive at number six. A non, two non-ranked schools, but that ought to be a heck of a ball game at Leiden tonight. Weber taking on Notre Dame. Both teams, black and blue, tough type ball clubs. And I tell you, you know, in Class A, we mentioned St. Edward, and good luck to the Green Wave as they take on Princeton tonight in the uh, Super Sectional out at DeKalb. Tonight in the Kankakee Super Sectional, which, which is being played at Olivet Nazarene College, 
Driscoll at 25 and two, the class 3A champ in football. That winning tradition's carried over to basketball. You've seen a number of articles and been reading the local papers. Driscoll at 25 and two, taking on St. Martin de Porres out of the Catholic League at 14 mm -hmm. and 16. Winner to go down state in Class A. Yeah. You think Driscoll has a good shot, huh? Oh, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Zeismer back outside. And coming up on 45 seconds left in this third quarter. Palmer looking for help, and he's fouled. I'm sure they're going to call the foul on. Call that foul on. I believe they called it on Benton, but they flashed right. the wrong number up on the scoreboard. Yeah, so that'll be his fourth. Sending Palmer to the line. Foot comes out. Rucker back in. Renner. Johnny Rucker's really had a quiet night. He's really the stalwart on this team, has been all year. Rucker with 11 points on the night. Palmer at the line. Most, good. most of his points from the charity stripe tonight. Palmer really getting banged up, especially that first half. He seemed to spend more time on the hardwood than he did on his feet. Brown in, Binion takes a seat. Second one off the mark, Zeismer fights for the ball. Oh, and some hard contact. They call it a jump ball. Zeismer jumped on the back of Kevin Rennert and Larkin's possession. They'll flip the arrow and the Royals will inbound. Hornock for Brown. Slapped away, Hanser knocks it off the knee of Brown. The little point guard with the quick hands. Fletcher to inbound for the Vikings, looking to cut into this 19-point lead. Picked off by Zeismer, poor pass. Thomas looking inside for Hornock. <laughs> Hornock wins the battle of the head fakes, puts it in. I tell you, Holmstrom had to watch it because that would have been his fourth foul if he would have gotten a foul there. And that was a nice cut away from the ball by Hornock. Holmstrom answers. And Palmer gets it off, but it won't go. And at the end of three quarters, Larkin on top by 19. We'll be back after this break. In the Army National Guard Infantry, you run, jump, shoot, climb, sweat, and strain the limits of your physical and mental ability. But you learn to seize control of any situation. And that's something that'll make the rest of your life a whole lot easier. An irresistible feeling from the irresistible force. Army National Guard. Every woman knows that a good diet, medical care, and exercise can make you look and feel better. It's a good idea at any age. But there comes a time when taking care of yourself is not just for looks. After age 55, a woman's risk of heart attack triples. Find out what you can do today. Call the American Heart Association. And we're back for fourth quarter action. Just a reminder before we get started here for all the high school basketball highlights of Elgin High, St. Edward, as well as the Larkin Royals. Tune into the Elgin Weekend Review, seen on Fridays on Channel 6 at 6 and 9, and Saturday mornings at 9.30. Fletcher with the easy layup. Fletcher with 13. And Johnny Rucker. Benton knocks it out of bounds. Schuler back on the lineup, and Thomas is going to grab a seat. The two big men, Binion and Brown, both start the fourth quarter for the Royals.
Binion with the ball. This is about the time where Binion usually starts to make some noise, beginning of the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, one thing that's surprising me tonight is I, I was hoping that maybe Larkin would press more, given that Guilford's susceptible to the press, and Larkin really didn't press him tonight. I, I think they, they, they did for that short period, and they climbed the mountain and the lead up to 20, yeah. and then they kind of laid off. Palmer gets the inside scoop. Palmer, a rare field goal from the field this evening. Rucker goes baseline, nice move, and that's gonna count. Rucker with his ninth point of the night. Rucker beat Schuler off the dribble, and the help was slow in getting there. That'll be on Brown. The 52, that's his second personal. This is the free throw. And rejected, Rennert rejected. Rucker gathers, fight for the ball, and Brown. Oh! oh. And Brown let the elbows fly, and Benton caught one in the jaw. And for Brown, that'll be his, I have him with three now. The fans don't like it, but that's a good call. Well, don't ask Dom Kanata. No. Uh, I think we had a better angle than Dom, though. I think if Dom watches the tape here, I think you'll see it. Brown with his Bill Cartwright move. <laughs> Will it go? Fletcher gets the roll. Hey, gang, a lot of points being scored on this end of the court. Guilford with a chance to move under 15 points for the first time this half. Fletcher at the line tonight. Three for four from the charity strike. And a little Guilford cheerleader almost gets run over by <laughs> Sherrick Simpson checking back into the ball game. And David Binion grabs a seat. Larkin fans, Larkin student body wishing her off the court. Fletcher hits the free throw and a little bit of pressure applied by the Vikings. Wow. And they get Schuler for the travel. A little bit of a letdown here. I'll tell you, if, if Guilford pulls a three right here, they're right back in this ball game. And they get it into the money man, Fletcher. Jumper on the way, in and out for Renard Schuler tries to collect, and he does. Hornock looking for some help. Simpson to Palmer. Oh, nice block. Two blocks. And they're going to get Kevin Rennert for the foul. Rennert, that's his first personal. Going to send Palmer to the line. Palmer, 7 of 9 tonight from the charity strike. We're closing in on the six-minute mark of the fourth quarter. The crowd begins to make some noise. They're stirring here at Chesbro. Palmer hits the free throw. 62-47, the Royals on top. And Sean collects them both. And here's some of that pressure defense you wanted, Paul. Well, that's, I think, one of the ways that uh, Larkin increased that lead, as you said. Oh! And Fletcher whacked from behind by Brown. That's going to be Brown's fourth personal foul. Larkin starting to get in foul trouble here with 6-11 left to go in regulation. And Dom Kanata probably going to elect to take Brown out of the ball game here. Dominic talking over with Hornock there. And Zeesmer comes back on the lineup. Fletcher at the line again. Fletcher four for five from the stripe tonight. Uncharacteristic. Boy, he's got that line drive stroke working tonight. And he hits them both. 
And they attempt to double team Hornock in the backcourt to Palmer. Zeismer open underneath. And he gets the easy one. Nice recognition by Sean Palmer. And Hernzer throws it up. Holmstrom back in the lineup. But it's going to be on Hornock. It's his first personal foul tonight. And you got to take a look at this kid, number 52. He really is feeling the heat. He looks tired, looks beat. Answered now one for two from the stripe. Gets another one. And this could draw the Vikings to within 14 points. And it does. Hornock gets it into Schuler. Nice pass to Palmer. Help. <laughs> Schuler beats the pressure. Nice. And Hornock gets the easy one. Nice patience from Hornock down low. And the long up court. Fletcher. Oh my. Rucker. It's the bottom of the rim. I think Simpson had a lot to do with it too. Hornock double team in the backcourt, looking for some help. Simpson, the intimidator inside. Time starting to run out for the Guilford Vikings. Palmer, air ball. Through the hands of Schuler. Oh, and Zeismer can't collect. And Simpson gets it back for the easy one. 69-51, your score here on Jones Intercable. John Merck here along with Paul Lepic as we go under five minutes left in the ball game. Off the mark by the point guard, Zeismer out of there. Oh my God, three on one. Oh, Zeismer. And he pulls it out. Yeah. going to elect to take Brown out of the ball game here. Dominic is talking over with Hornock there. As Zeesmer comes back on the lineup. Fletcher at the line again. Fletcher four for five from the stripe tonight. Uncharacteristic. Boy, he's got that line drive stroke working tonight. And he hits them both. And they attempt to double team Hornock in the backcourt to Palmer. Zeismer open underneath. And he gets the easy one. Nice recognition by Sean Palmer. And Hernzer throws it up. Holmstrom back in the lineup. But it's going to be on Hornock. It's his first personal foul tonight. And you got to take a look at this kid, number 52. He really is feeling the heat. He looks tired, looks beat. Answered now one for two from the stripe. Gets another one. And this could draw the Vikings to within 14 points. And it does. Hornock gets it into Schuler. Nice pass to Palmer. Help. <laughs> Schuler beats the pressure. Nice. And Hornock gets the easy one. 
Nice patience from Hornock down low. And the long up court. Fletcher. Oh, my. Rucker. Ooh. It's the bottom of the rim. I think Simpson had a lot to do with it, too. Hornock double team in the backcourt, looking for some help. Simpson, the intimidator inside. Time starting to run out for the Guilford Vikings. Palmer, air ball. Through the hands of Schuler. Oh, and Zeismer can't collect. And Simpson gets it back for the easy one. 69-51, your score here on Jones Intercable. John Merck here along with Paul Lepic as we go under five minutes left in the ball game. Off the mark by the point guard, Zeismer out of there. Oh my God, three on one. Oh, Zeismer and he pulls it out. Yeah. Palmer open left side, there he is. Run some clock. The Royals trying to be patient. Palmer out top of the key, dances to Hornock, who's fouled. Charles Hansard with the reach in. It's Hansard's third personal foul. Well, they got him with four. Okay. And Mr. Excitement set to check back in. <laughs> David Binion. There's David. The man with the long shorts, David Binion. Shervick Simpson goes to the bench. Nice hand from the Larkin crowd on the far side. Renner and checks back in. And foot for the Vikings. Yep. And Rucker's going to grab a seat. There you see Mike Miller hoping his squad has one more run left. gathered the board, got fouled, and then threw his own little elbow at the end of that play. The big kid pretty frustrated. Holmstrom wears those little booty socks. You take a look at his feet, you can kind of see it looks like he doesn't even have any socks on. That'd be Zeesmer's second personal foul against the Royals and Larkin. So one and one, of course, Holmstrom at the line. Holmstrom 0 for 1 from the charity stripe. He's got eight points on the night. And he'll get one more. And he hits it, Binion to inbound. Palmer up to Hornock. Up. And he was fouled by foot. Well, that's no, no problem there. Foot's second personal foul, but somebody's got to cover Hornock as soon as he crosses that timeline. He's getting double teamed right at the timeline. Nobody's really coming out to help him. And Rucker, Benton, and Fletcher, the big guns for the Guilford Vikings, set to check back in. For this final 417 left in this sectional semifinal. We're not get the charity stripe tonight. And it's good. Larkin by 17. And the second one on the way. In and out, Holmstrom gathers. Johnny Rucker tries to dribble through the double coverage. Palmer didn't see David Binion open down court. Brown in the oh. middle. Tries to kick it back out and throws it away. 
One of the things Larkin might have to work on a little bit is the delay game. Not doing too well tonight on the, on the delay. And Rucker as we go under four minutes. Ah. And there Holmstrom throws it away, trying to work a little give and go with Fletcher. Weren't exactly on the same page. And the Royals will inbound. Play's starting to get a little sloppy here. It's 3.53 left now to go in regulation. As we mentioned earlier, the winner of this game plays the winner of the Hananiga versus Elgin game. Greg Hornock and the steal. Benton takes it himself up over the top and good. Nice play by Benton, use of the glass. And Schuler looks to bring it up. And Guilford with no defensive pressure. Don't quite understand that at this point in the ball game. Oh, Binion with a strong inside move. Binion with 15. Time running out for the Vikings. They look inside. And Benton comes up short, gathers. Resets and misses again. Binion with the rebound. And he's fouled. Binion will come down court. And he'll be at the charity strike. Dom Kanata, a few words of wisdom for Matt Schuler, Greg Hornock. That foul was on Rennert. That's his second personal. He's going to grab a bench, grab a seat. And Binion will try to add to his point total. David at the line tonight, one for two. And that one's good. The Royals thus far have handled everybody they've played outside of the Upstate 8 Conference. And it's looking like it may be the same story tonight. Holmstrom with the rebound. There are two losses coming in that Upstate 8 Conference, twice at the hands of Wabonzi Valley, as you said, Paul, was eliminated earlier, and one to St. Charles. Rucker gathers, looks to go up, can't get it to fall, Brown. Oh, they wanted Binion, they had a four on one. <laughs> Gave it to Palmer. And Palmer, Palmer gets it too. With 15. Holmstrom, oh. ooh, and Binion picks it off. Binion wants to go down. <laughs> and he does he go down. He did go down. <laughs> Poor David. And a three on the way. Oh. Rucker banks it. And Guilford wants a timeout, can't get it. Palmer gets the ball in. Hornock across the timeline as we approach two minutes left in this ball game. Palmer inside, Holmstrom slaps him on the wrist. And for Holmstrom, that'll be his fourth, I believe. I've got him with four. Yeah. Palmer and with two minutes left in the ball game. Dom Canada with a little bit of counsel for Matt Schuler. Free throw, good. Probably saying no foul. You got an 18-point lead, no sense to foul. Just play good, tight defense, that's all. Let him have a three on the way. Ooh. Rucker takes a dive, no call. They swipe at the ball. In a crowd, Palmer. Four on two. Ah. David Binion with his hands in the air. Ah. Oh, and he misses the jam, and the crowd loves it. Well, that's, that's how it's been going tonight for Rockford Guilford. Benton went for the jam, didn't oh. get it. And the crowd doesn't know if that's more fun than when Binion does jam. They're loving it. And the Guilford side of the floor, well, rather quiet. Foul's going to be called on Rucker. 
They have it with three. And it's time to empty the bench for Mike Miller. Hornock's gonna go to the line. Hank Jaime checks in, Andy Saunders. Number 20, Scott Grulke into the ball game. The official score over there can't even keep up. The substitutions are coming so hot and heavy. <laughs> well, Guilford's gonna finish the season at 18 and 11. And Tim Sherman into the ballgame for the Vikings. Kendrick Thomas back onto the floor, as well as Danny Engel for the Royals. Nice hand for Sean Palmer. Nice hand for Matt Schuler as he comes to the bench. Chris Brown. Get some of the reserves in. You never know when you're going to need them down the road. Hornock looks to add his point total. And he does, hits a free throw. And the Guilford fans, to the delight of the Larkin fans, begin to file out of Chesboro Fieldhouse. And number 20. And a lot of slop going on out there. <laughs> Simpson regains control. <laughs> Thomas oh, misses Kendrick. the layup. And another poor shot by Scott Grulke and a foul on the play. A shot attempt by Saunders. We'll go to the line for two. And coming into the lineup. Larkin will start to give some of their prime players a little bit of a rest this last minute down the stretch. They'll have to come back and play again on Friday evening. Arnock comes over to the bench. You see Charles Asp taking his position on the free throw line there. The foul, by the way, was on Angle. That was his first. Andy Saunders gets into the scoring column for the Vikings. And he misses the second, Simpson. And you're gonna hear this place erupt once again uh, as Casey Wagner and Kevin Soderholm set to check in for the Royals. And the crowd loves these guys. Yeah. Crowd favorites. Let's see if they can get in the book. 79-59, a 20-point Larkin lead. Larkin will go up to 26 and three. Soderholm with two points on the year, <laughs> and Wagner with seven. But the crowd loves these guys. Oh. Yes. Oh, he gets whacked in the head, still goes by, oh. can't control. Tim Sherman does get it underneath. And Stephen Carter can't hit it. I'm going to call a foul here on Guilford. That's wow. going to be on Danny Nicholas. Another very young cog in this Viking machine, only a freshman. You don't see that very many places. A freshman on a varsity roster heading into the second season. Angle at the line. Looking for his first points on the night. 26 seconds left to go. And Henson now into the ball game for the Royals. As Angle hits the free throw. And Henson gathers the rebound. Soderholm can't connect. Fight for the ball. Carter out of there leading the Viking break and he's fouled by Soderholm. 17 seconds left in this ball game.
Another reminder for basketball highlights of the Elgin Maroons, the St. Edward Green Wave, as well as the Larkin Royals. Tune into the Elgin Week in Review. Seen here on Channel 6 on Fridays at 6 and 9 p.m. Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. And another foul. And not a smart play by Stephen Carter. That ball had a chance to go in. He went up and touched it. Won't count. Ooh, they're going to count the basket. Ball's on Asp. That's his first. Three-point play. Almost an air ball on the shot. Angle up ahead. Casey Wagner. Can't get it. Soderholm gathers. Looks. Henson thinks about it. Puts up the jumper. And Asp can't get it to fall. And we're out of time. Here at Chesboro Fieldhouse. The Larkin Royals with a big, big second quarter. Hold on to dominate the Rockford Guilford Vikings. Final score 80 to 61. Paul and I will be back courtside to wrap up the ball game and talk with some of the participants. Don't go away. Wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they'll listen to what you have to say. The power of teaching. The will get no better. If we're just the power to wake up young minds, the power to wake up the world. Teachers have that power. Reach for the power. Teach. I'm Edward James Olmos, and we're recruiting new teachers. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. A radioactive gas has been found in homes in your area. It's called radon. And it's so deadly, it's the second leading cause of lung cancer. High radon levels will expose your family to as much radiation as having literally hundreds of chest x-rays in one year. But there is something you can do about it. Call to get your radon test information. Radon, the health hazard in your home that has a simple solution. And we're joined by Sean Palmer, part of that vaunted three-guard attack the Larkin Royals run. Tell me about tonight's ball game. Well, I think uh, the first half we came out and we took control really well and uh, we ran offense well and we're poised. And then uh, second half we came out and we, we struggled a little bit. We didn't play like, like the smart uh, team that we were. But, uh, but we'll, you know, we'll work on that and I'm sure the coach will discuss that with us. I don't know why we uh, decided to get a little frantic, but, but it's not that big of a deal. Big second quarter. You guys play a pretty tight first quarter. They're only down by five points here in Elgin. You come out the second quarter, and that press, the way it was played in the second quarter, there's some college teams that couldn't have beat the press you guys threw out there. That's really the strength of this ball club, it seems like, is that tough defense and how the scoring is so balanced. Yeah, we knew when we kept coming in this game that we could press these guys. Uh, we work on it and practice all the time, and, you know, I, we, we, we do a good job at it. You know, we all know we have to hustle, and, and, it, and it's... And, it's, you know, it just comes from the heart, you know. You can't play defense with skill, and you're not born to play defense. You just got to work hard at, all, at it, and we do. You know, we practice it a lot. Now, speaking of a guy with a lot of heart, you almost didn't play this year. Uh, and you ended up coming back, and now here you are. You're the leading scorer on the ball team, a very vital cog in the Royal Attack. Are you glad you decided to be a part of it? Sure. Yeah. There, there was a lot of things, you know, that was running through my mind at the beginning of the season. And, and, you know, it, it, I, I got them straightened them out, and I got straightened out, and, and I'm glad, you know, and I'm glad I'm back. And, you know, I just want this team to go downstate because, you know, we got a chance, and, and we got a good chance. And, and no basketball team's ever done that in uh, Larkin's history. So, no, that, that's all I want, and, and uh, I hope we do it. Well, Sean, you're headed down the right path. Yeah, we are. Look ahead to Elgin. Hananiga, you gonna try to take in that game tomorrow? Yeah, I should be. I got some homework I gotta get done first, but <laughs> then I'll be here. Yeah, I wouldn't miss that for the world. Yeah, uh, both teams are pretty tough. You know, Elgin's on their home floor. Hananiga, you know, they're probably the favorite. You know, either way, we'll be ready to play, you know. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll face them, uh, either one of them. Doesn't matter. Should be a good ball game, and congratulations on the season you've had thus far. We Appreciate hope it. that it's far from over and we can follow you guys to I Rockford. I hope you guys follow us all the way down. Are you not going to stay with us? Well, we're thinking about <laughs> it. No problem, but so. we hope, hope so. so. We hope at least you get there, then we'll yes. have the chance to okay. decide if we want to go All or right. not. So. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for joining Thank us, you. Sean. Thank you. And we'll be back with Coach Dom Kanata after this short break on Jones Intercable. Stay with us. My daddy went to the hospital today. My mother said his heart is sick. He says it won't be long until he comes back. 
I hope he gets well soon because I miss him very much. What heart disease can mean is leaving home one day and never coming back. You can help prevent heart disease. We can tell you how. I'll make dinner soon, princess. Just let me rest. The simple act of shopping for food used to leave this woman too tired to even eat. Who do you turn to when you're all alone? She got help through a volunteer shopping program for the elderly. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. And Coach Dominic Canada joining us. Happy with the effort this evening, Coach? I think we had an excellent first half. Uh, I think things got a little sloppy in the second half. Uh, but I think we had such a commanding lead. In the last five games, we've won uh, all our games by more than 30 points. So I think the kids felt a little bit like here goes another 30-point game. And we got a little sloppy handling the ball. But uh, we still helped maintain our 20-point lead throughout the, uh, and, you know, at the end of the uh, second half. And really the difference was that second quarter where you went up by about 20. And from there on out, it was a pretty even ball game. But that explosive, tenacious defense, the second quarter, once again seemed to be the thing that turned this team around and fired it up and got the offense clicking. I think it was no doubt. You know, we played excellent defense, I thought, in the first half, especially in the second quarter. And it was hard to keep that intensity up throughout the whole game, especially when you're up by 20 points. So we had some letdowns, and then Sean Palmer sprained his ankle, and we had some foul problems with David Binion and Chris Brown and Sherrick Simpson. So those sort of uh, slowed us down also. You know, we had to make some substitutions and people were on the floor for maybe only two or three minutes at a time. So if we didn't have that foul, you know, those individuals in foul trouble, I think uh, the game would have been uh, maybe a little, maybe we would have played a little better in the second half. Now we've seen you guys about 10 times this year and I have the feeling, Coach, that every time I watch you, you're just not even to that point yet of playing the best basketball you can for four quarters and when you finally find that somebody's going to be in a lot of trouble yeah I, I think you're right you know we've uh, gotten to the point sometimes where we can at least place a half of really good basketball or maybe a quarter and a half but once we get ourselves to play three and a half to four quarters of good basketball uh, we're really going to be rolling and now you're getting to that crucial point of the season what's it going to take as you head into these tougher teams you'll either get Elgin back here on their home court you're going to face Rockton Hananiga if you don't face Elgin in a rematch of last year's sectional finals what's it going to take for you to advance to the super sectional downstate, what's this team going to have to do? Well, they're two totally different types of teams. Uh, Elgin's balanced. Obviously, they have the home court advantage. They play good defense, and they're really scrappy. And then you have Hananigo, who has probably the, one of the best guards in the state. Uh, so you'd have to contain that one guard and, and try to limit his amount of points, and where Elgin is more balanced. So uh, they're really two different types of teams, and it depends on who wins tomorrow night and how we're going to have to approach it. But I think from our standpoint, we have to play good defense, uh, get our fast break going like we did here in the first half, and, uh, you know, execute our offense. And a quick update on Ryan Hoover. On, uh, I'm sorry, not Ryan Hoover. On Sean Palmer. Uh, his ankle sprained. It's, it's bothering him a little bit, you know. He wanted to play a little bit this second half, and we got him back in there. So we're going to ice it down now, and hopefully he'll be all right by Friday. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thank you. And good luck on Friday, okay, whoever thanks. you play. Okay. And we'll be back after this break. Eighteen months ago, this woman lived every woman's worst nightmare. Where do you go to put the pieces back together? She got help at a rape crisis center. They got help from the United Way. Thank God the United Way got help from you. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. Okay, kids, why are drugs bad for you? Oh, you know me, I know, I know. Drugs make you mean to everybody like a monster. Then you get real sick and skinny like a skeleton, and you can even die. Yeah, mom and dad will be so sad, they'll cry for a long time. That's right, kids. So don't buy them. And once again, Paul, a pretty balanced attack for the Larkin Royals. Why don't you give me the top couple scores for each, each team this evening? Well, Sean Palmer led the Larkin Royals with 17 points. David Binion with 16. Chris Brown with 14. Hornock with 15. And that basically led the Larkin attack. As far as the uh, Rockford Guilford Vikings, led in scoring by Fletcher with 18 and Johnny Rucker with 16. 
you know, we saw just a dominant, dominant defense. The beginning of that second quarter into the end of the second quarter, nobody could have handled that, I don't think, in the entire state. But they have not been able to put it together for a full game yet, and they're going to have to start to do that. Yeah, that, that's concerning me, that third quarter letdown a little yeah. bit. Defensively, I think that's going to be one of the concerns that Dominic Kanan is going to have to work on. Uh, he's got a little bit of time before the winner of the Rockton Hananiga and Elgin game where he has to look at that. And, and the guys can't let down. At this stage of the ballgame, when you've got the number two seed coming at you or Elgin High School, and, you know, this would be... I believe the third time that Elgin's going to face Larkin, uh, if it does happen right. that way. I don't know if Dominic mentioned to you, but uh, the leading scorer for Rockford Boylan is out with a disciplinary sus uh, a disciplinary action. Right. And right. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 shot going down state is excellent right now for the Larkin Raws if they can do it. But you can't let down at that stage of the ballgame. Just can't. and you got to believe they have the athletes. Yeah. They just have to keep putting it together now yeah. and continuing to grow and yeah. gel as a team. Yeah. and they're going to be okay. I think so. Uh, you know, <laughs> Rockton can be tough. Uh, they have a good balanced attack. Uh, you know, if, if you go down, you go Rockford Boylan. Rockford Boylan's a tough team. Uh, they were ranked number one, the Rock Island sectional. Well, if Rockford Boylan gets lost, and LaSalle Peru is the number two team, they might move on. LaSalle Peru's always tough in that region. And, uh, I, you know, it's not, a, it's not an easy trip for Larkin, but I think, as you said, Larkin's got enough guns from the outside and inside, as you saw with Brown. Brown had it easy tonight. Uh, Greg Hornock had it easy tonight. Sherrick Simpson had it easy tonight. So it was a good game, and uh, but there were some things that we have to look at, and hopefully that Larkin can, can uh, wrap those things up. And we will look at that. I'll see you, Paul, at the sectional, sectional final. final coming That's up right. this Friday. That's right. For Paul Lepic, I'm John Merck here for Channel 6 Sports, and we'll see you at the next game. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night. Have to stay.